the humble berry. Now, are you a strawberry person, a blackberry, a blueberry? How many blueberries in here? Maybe they're out of stock. Anyway, these are welcomed in any kitchen, and they are also at the center of the global economy. These are Driscoll's of various kinds, strawberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Now, to get these to my breakfast table relies on a robust supply chain, grown, shipped around the world. And Driscoll's has adapted a climate change by diversifying where they grow, how they grow them, the AI, and all those sorts of things. So now, Driscoll's uses technology to brood the best fruit possible. One thing is certain, the ability to provide berries is an achievement. Soren Vion is the incoming CEO of Driscoll's and the president of its America's business, Watsonville, California. Uh, Soren, you may be well aware that Driscoll's is a firm favorite on my breakfast table, um, <laughs> whatever the price, but, but I, I'm particularly curious. Now you're coming in as CEO, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna change? Well, I have one of your strawberries, which we paid for. Well, uh, good to see you, Richard. And uh, well, let me start with what we're not going to change. You know, delighting consumers like you will still be our mission every day. Uh, but there are really uh, three big things that I see that will be critically important going forward. And one is the role that technology will play in our business. And you touched on AI, but many, many other tools as well. Um, the impact of climate change. Uh, this has definitely been a, a pretty rough year for us on, on the farms. We've had a lot of, lots of weather impact. And then uh, it's our people, you know, making sure our people can come along for the journey, right? Those are the three big things for me. Okay, let's deal with people first. The requirement of a migrant, la the requirement for a migrant labor force to pick the stuff is so controversial now here in the United States. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the absolute reality, right? Is that the clear majority of uh, people that work on a farm today are migrant workers. And, uh, you know, and they fundamentally come, you know, two different ways, either through the legal process of an H2A guest worker, or they have in many cases been here for a long time and being undocumented. And uh, it's something that uh, unfortunately the political situation has not been able to address in North America for a long time. There are very practical solutions that we see even in our neighboring countries, like, uh, like in Canada, we see it throughout Europe. And it's an absolute must uh, to have a system that works uh, to be able to farm in this country. So um, we are still hopeful. And then you get this sort of supply chain problem. Uh, I mean, let's just talk about what we're talking about today, the supply chain issues from Asia up through the Red Sea, which might or might not affect Driscoll in some case, or it might be your packaging that's affected, uh, or it might be some other part of the world. But every geopolitical crisis seemingly will hit you at some point. I, mean, I think that's right. And uh, we are definitely keenly aware that we need to create more redundancies uh, in our very supply chain. Uh, this year, there was a, we were significantly impacted by El Nino in Peru. And so our blueberry supply was maybe why you were a little short today. It's, uh, it's quite short this year, um, but there are alternatives like Southern Africa. And so we need to build more of these redundancies into our overall supply chain. And we are, we are definitely doing that right now. On the, well, related to this though, on this question of food miles and how far our food has to travel, do you think you start getting hit by this. I remember being in Western Canada years ago about to have some fish and somebody pointed it out to me. It had come from New Zealand and that the, it, you know, it had more food miles than I had air miles. At what point do you think we need to consider that? Well, we've been working on this for, I would say, over a decade. Uh, it's not too long ago that uh, your winter supply of raspberries and blackberries and Marks and Spencer or weight rose in the UK mm -hmm. would have been flown in from Mexico now it's driven in from Morocco. So the thing about berries is they're so perishable that we have lots of incentives to try to get the supplier berries closer to the consumers. So um, we're doing this in Canada right now where we are growing Canadian berries in the summertime for right. the Canadian market. Now, there are some practicalities, right? You know, we, you know, berries love the good weather, so you, know, you mm -hmm. can't grow berries everywhere. Yeah. And we are still a long ways from truly doing these indoors where we are not reliant on the climate. Well, I'm going to Britain tomorrow night. 
have to say I'm looking forward to some M&S berries when I get there. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your... Uh, and we bought these berries just in case any viewer decides. <laughs> that, uh, we were we were given we bought them, but I'm very grateful. And 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 as you take over as CEO, sir, I'm looking forward to having you on the program many times in the months ahead, sir. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you.